Hey, how are you doing? Tori is here. Today we have a slightly different video, but it still involves technology, which is this channel about. So as you can see, I have recently bought a dash cam. It is called the 8man C550. In the box we will find a welcome leaflet and a user's manual. The camera itself. And the accessories which are the 12 volt cigarette plug, the plastic mounting, the plastic prior another USB cable and the rear camera as well. Oh, and also the reset pin in case you need to reset the camera. The camera itself is very lightweight and it's not too big, which is a bonus so it doesn't block too much view on the window shield. We can also tilt the angle of the camera for the best results. The 12 volt cigarette plug is a 5 volt 1.5 amp plug and it comes with an additional USB plug so you can also charge your devices. On the other end of this plug we can find a mini USB which is not really future proof but it will do for now. They also include a plastic prior tool which is handy but I find it a little bit thick so I ended up using my own. There is an additional USB cable to connect the camera to a computer and last but not least the rear camera which comes with a really long cable. Seriously I was struggling a bit to hide all those cables in the car. Also comes with some adhesive and screws so we can have two options to mount it. The camera works with micro SD cards and I recommend to buy at least a 16GB because those footages will fill the memory card up really quick. A 5 minute front and rear footage is about 1GB. So I will let you do the math. Now whenever the camera is getting a power source it will turn on automatically and it will start recording automatically. Since I plugged it into my PC it won't start recording immediately, instead it will ask how I would like to use my camera. This is what you will see on the screen. Now let's go through some settings. We can change the resolution. the display mode on the camera screen we can select how long we want our footages white dynamic range exposure motion detection which will detect a motion and it will start recording, turning the microphone on or off, date stamps on the footages, G sensor will lock the footage in case of an accident, the parking monitor which will detect a strong vibration or a shock and it will turn on and start recording, a license plate number which I am not entirely sure what it is for, 
a GPS, which by the way is sold separately. And it plugs into here. Speed units, kilometer per hour or miles per hour. On the next page, we can set date and time. How long we want the screen to stay on. How long we want the device to stay on. The frequency of the device screen. We can turn on the alert sounds for the buttons or the startup. These are the available languages. We can format the memory card and we can also reset the device to factory settings. So there are five buttons on the device. The middle one will start and stop recording whenever we press it. The down arrow will mute the microphone. And we can also turn the screen off with this button. If we press the down and the up button at the same time, it will lock the footage so it won't get overwritten. Now installing is quite simple, this is my first time doing this and I managed to hide the cables quite neatly. It will take a little bit of time but it's worth it at the end of the day. Before you start make sure you know where you're gonna put your camera, try different positions and find the best angle for you. So with my plastic prior I hit the cables between the roof and the inside roof, then from there I hit it under the A pillar cover. I got a small plastic panel on my side of the car that I managed to pop off and now I can use it to insert the cable through it, making it more tidy. I also used the rubber seal on the doors to hide the cables. From there you can see the cables goes under my steering wheel and there is this plastic cover which is held by one screw. I removed that screw and I pushed the 12 volt cigarette plug through it, which is in its place now as you can see. By the way, there is a way to install the plug into the fuse plug, which is behind this panel, but that's for another time. With the rear camera, I used the same method, using my plastic prior to hide the cables between the roof and then the A pillar cover and using the rubber door seals again. At the B pillar, take extra cautions, cause as you can see there is an airbag and you don't want that to explode. Some cars got their airbags in the A pillar. From the B pillar we are continuing to the rubber seals again and then back to the C pillar. 
and we end up at the boot of the car. Now there is a small gap between the roof and the inside roof at the boot and thank goodness for that because as I mentioned earlier the cables are really really long but I managed to hide them in there. Now it's time for some dash cam footage. I had to remove the sound for copyright reasons, but you can trust me when I say the microphone is kinda bad. So don't expect good sound quality. As you can see the front camera is doing a decent job during the day, so does the rear camera. But when it comes to night time the quality goes down quite a bit. They are quite dark and you can't really see everything. You soon will see that the rear camera is absolutely unusable at night, but for its price this was expectable. Also, to be fair, I have tinted glass on the back, so that won't help really.
So to sum it up, this budget dashcam is really easy to install, it's cheap, but at the same time I wish it would have a better rear camera. What do you think? Let me know if you have any questions down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you are a fan. Thank you all so much for joining me and I will see you in the next one.